Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least. But there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic, grain, and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And joining us now to discuss the market trade action that we saw on Wednesday as the trade was keeping one eye on what the Federal Reserve was going to say after their December meeting wrapped up and maybe another eye on just the lack of fresh news in the trade, a fairly choppy session on Wednesday. Joining us to discuss, we say hello to our good friend Dwayne Bussey of Bolt Marketing. Dwayne, good to catch up with you again, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, doing real well. I'm just... uh... Fighting out the winter storm up here, I guess. Yeah, kids are at home, so staying over here in the office a little longer. <laughs> it's all good, but yeah, it's uh, going to be a long week. <laughs> I was going to say, you are right there smack dab in the middle of that winter storm up in South Dakota. A bunch of snow, maybe some ice in your neck of the woods, it sounded like, Dwayne. You know, it started with a half inch of rain, which is really odd for this time of year. But uh, yeah, that mixed with a little bit of ice, but we're keeping the lights on and a little bit of snow now. And it's just such a slow moving system. So it feels like we should be done with it. And now we're supposed to get about 10 inches of snow on the backside of this thing. So not looking forward to it, but I have plenty of office work to keep me busy. So I can just sit in here, I guess. (laughs) Well, I guess one plus it's moisture. And we yep. definitely need the moisture. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll take that as the caveat here, I think. <laughs> well, Dwayne, as you get to sit in the office and ride out a snowstorm, take a look at a fairly uneventful market day Wednesday. Really just kind of choppy yeah. trade and maybe a little inner market spreading and wheat. But other than that, really, this market just not doing a whole heck of a lot. What uh, What's your thoughts just in general as we look at the market action Wednesday? Yeah, no, I think you're right. It feels a little bit like a holiday trade, but... Eh. Maybe that's deceiving a little bit here because you got some wedge patterns forming in like the March corn where, you know, the uptrend line is going to come up and intersect with the downtrend line. So you might get a breakout out of this yet. And soybeans are struggling with some that $15 resistance. It's more like $14.95, but it's easier to say $15. It struggles with news to push above that. And yeah, there's some news for the bulls. There's some news for the bears. And then for therefore just a choppy trade and you know you and i mentioned before we went on air too that the fed minutes coming out here so it felt like the market was just going to wait to see you know what they were going to come up with but they came up with a half percent interest rate hike like we anticipated but stock market didn't take it the best we were trading higher there but sharply not sharply lower but lower now anyway so a little flip there it sounds like it was a little bit more hawkish than everybody wanted Yeah, well, and it's interesting, you know, some of that initial reaction, I'll be curious to see if there's any follow through in the macro markets on Thursday, just because, you know, think back to Tuesday, we got the CPI data, we were sharply higher, and then we let it all go through the session. So we'll see what the Fed uh, reaction is maybe 24 hours uh, after the news. But I'm with you, nothing surprising from the Fed, except maybe a, a bit more hawkish commentary. And it just feels like, that was maybe the last hurdle in this trade, Dwayne, before Christmas and New Year's. There's not much else standing in the way for news and reports in this commodity and livestock market right now. No, you're, you're right. And sadly, a lot of the managed funds are probably already out of their positions if they wanted to by the end of the year, or they will be in a couple of days by the end of this week. I, I look for a very light trade next week and the week after. Um it just happens every time this time of year. It used to be just the day before was the holiday trade way back when I started doing this trading. And now it seems to be another day ahead each time. So now here we are the 15th or 14th and we're still already talking holiday trade. But you know, it's also a bad time of year where you know we've got our production fairly known. I you know we got a big report in January, but yeah, that's too far off to get excited about changing our production. Our supply side of things are, is cemented. So we look at the demand and it's just, it's fine. Uh, demand's okay. Uh, it's out there. W- what I do like is what I saw last week in the trade, Jesse. Mm-hmm. It looked like we got below 650 in, in the corn futures, and end users stepped up in a big way with the commercials buying on this uh, commitment of traders report. Yes, the managed funds were big sellers, but they do that into the end of the year quite often. But it seems like the, the end users stepped up and said, that's cheap enough and bought. And we know China stepped in and bought uh, beans on a dip. So 
I feel like corn and soybeans have really good support underneath this market anyway. Well, let's talk a little more soybeans first. You mentioned this uh, a little bit ago, talking about that resistance, that like $15, $14.95 resistance. Uh, yeah. That's something that I continue to watch. We've tested that now a couple of times and we just can't break through it. And, you know, yeah, China stepped in, bought on the dip. We've seen them do that. I don't know how many times now, you know, we're getting closer to them really just kind of turning their attention to South America with Brazil, yeah. et cetera. So we wonder, you know, demand, how much longer do we have demand on our side here for soybeans? So overall, I don't see anything barring a black swan that is going to be a newsworthy item enough to get us through that overhead resistance right now, Dwayne. I, I, no, I don't see that before the holiday session here either. In fact, as the trader in, in me is going to watch beans and if we can't, if we get close to that resistance, $15 and can't push through it within like an hour of trade, I'd be looking to sell it, you know, and maybe have a stop up above it or something because yeah, it, I don't think we have the news. Argentina is still dry, um, hot, dry forecast for about the next seven to 10 days. And then some rain at the end of the month here, end of the year, the anticipate getting a little bit of rain, but you know, rain's always in the forecast if you look far enough out. But on the other side of that, Brazil doesn't have that hot, dry forecast, pretty favorable mm -hmm. forecast. So there's your overhead resistance, right? I, I think what we would have to do is come into one of these holiday trades, uh, maybe it's next Monday, if Brazil was hot and dry, and then with light volume, then you could get a sharp rally that would bust through the resistance, but would also trigger a bust through some sell stops up above or buy stops, and then it would run the market even higher. So it might be a boring, quiet trade, but it could still get pretty wild, though. It very well could. And yeah, I'm glad you mentioned some of those maybe sell stops there. I think that's an interesting note that I want to get to here in a little bit. Uh, as we talk a little more, just risk management and look at some new crop and some holiday trading thoughts. But meal oil spread, we know that's been wild. And we yeah. kind of saw that again, you know, go back in favor of meal on Wednesday, a little bit higher trade there. Um, and I think it's interesting. I've seen two in the wires that heard a lot, you know, the Argentine peso program. Not a lot of those pesos are going out to China or soybeans, I mean, are going out to China because. They're crushing it for meal right now, Dwayne. Right. Yeah. The Argentina is the big soybean meal crusher in the world. They account for about 40% of the world's exports and soybean meal. So that's why our market rallied so much. The soybean meal market did anyway, because of the Argentina drought concerns that they might not have anything to export out there. And yeah, we're on that second peso deal. The government has stepped up and it sounds like the farmers aren't as willing sellers as the government would like this go around. They've raised about half the funds the government has in taxes that they were hoping to generate by dropping the peso for farmers so they would get a higher price. You know, And that's what happens in a drought, right? We do it up here too. You tell a farmer you might not have much for new crop, and then he hangs on the old crop even tighter. So, so they're not getting as much sold this time around. You know, it's nice. I mean, it, granted, you know, it, they keep selling it then eventually they will run out of the supplies and china will probably have to come to us but you're right china i'd also heard there too they're about 70 percent bought up for january time frame and you know after january i don't know how much bookings we're going to get anymore if brazil has this record crop that it sure does look like they're going to have they'll start switching it to there but but you know our export pace is pretty good in soybeans that but yeah, you're kind of running out of time. If we don't get that drought scare or weather scare in Brazil pretty soon, even me, the bull, is going to have to kind of be like, well, maybe we better start selling some of this old crop soybeans here. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to watch too, China's got e exploding COVID cases again. One has to wonder if that's going to be an issue or not. And, and, and uh, you know, time will tell on that because I, I, it's anyone's best guess what the Chinese government might do regarding that. Right. You know, seeing how we went through COVID and when we opened everything up, right, you have more cases then because people mm -hmm. are out and about in China. You remember, they're much more compact than we are. So the number of cases are going to spike up, but I'm still glad they're opening up. You know, it's a bullish thing long term, but you're right on a hard down day. We'll be talking about that as one of the reasons and excuses. So hopefully when they're opening up here, yeah, people are somewhat safe and don't go a little too crazy running out everywhere and spreading the germs. But uh, it's a concern. But overall, I'm just so glad they're opening up. Dwayne Bussey, Bolt Marketing is our guest today here on Market Talk. Dwayne, let's uh, 
talk a little more on the corn side too before we talk some new crop thoughts uh, with this mm-hmm. court market you mentioned 650 uh that we kind of found that maybe support level here you know i know some farmers are saying well i want to get back to seven or i'm hoping oh, yeah. for 750 or whatever it is but 650 is a good price you know 640 even i mean you know i think I know. it's that's a pretty solid level here on some of this on this old crop right now Dwayne. It, it is and you know the basis improved quite a bit from harvest and yeah the cash price is good uh you, you're kind of in a spot here if you're a producer where you're deciding are, are you selling now or are you holding all the way for a spring rally i think and you know with the basis improving i, I can't stop anyone from selling here i, I yes I, i've been bullish lately here and I, and I still am because of that support i mentioned underneath the market but I don't have a catalyst to tell you why corn has to rally back to seven where every farmer wants it to go. We don't have that story right now. You know, Ukraine is exporting corn, but they're going to run out pretty soon, I believe. And they uh, only harvested about 66% of their corn crop they've got out there in the fields. To me, that was kind of big news overnight in the wires, but Mm -hmm. market didn't care too much about that. I mean, I, I wouldn't want that much of my corn still left out in the field, but I'll have to do some research. Maybe that's something they normally do, but I'm pretty sure it's due to the war. They left more corn out there. So this Ukraine situation is going to keep on going. You know, it'll be a thin in 23 for sure. They just might have less supplies. Yeah, maybe they're open for export, but if they don't have the supplies, they don't have the supplies. So, but yeah, back to your original statement. Yeah, corn's got a magnet around 650 for now until we get some sort of news to break us out of this wedge pattern. Well, and on the Ukraine side too, uh, the wheat picture that obviously is going to play into wheat. And I know Russia's got a big crop and we're looking at what wheat exports come out of the Black Sea. And then, you know, we have drought concerns here, Argentina, Australia is really wet. So a, a lot of things to watch in wheat here. And we, you know, in the grand scheme of things, U.S. prices, we have come down to be at least a bit more competitive on the global scale. You know, it's yeah. not nine, ten dollar wheat like we were seeing, but maybe this correction has been a, a good correction, so to speak. I don't know, Dwayne. No, I, I think you're right. It's always good to go down and find some demand. Uh, we didn't see the exports pick up like we did for corn and soybeans, maybe on the dip, but uh, uh, well, <laughs> exports really didn't pick up for corn either. I'm trying, don't want to make up a story there. It was commercials that stepped in and bought the futures, which I think is just as good. But yeah, on the wheat side of things, we didn't see massively pick up but we got so oversold that market had to bounce here but you're right we've taken all the ukrainian war premium out and we got to remember our supplies are actually fairly tight here um they're not scary tight but they're 15 year tight the problem is we've had such a huge supply of wheat for so many years we're just used to having plenty but you know right now as we start working with producers about looking into 2023 what crops are going to plant spring wheat doesn't work very well compared to soybeans right now so gosh uh, you're going to have a bullish story come spring and spring wheat if you can't get a rally before then. I'm glad you brought up 2023 because I want to talk about that. You know, you mentioned you're in the office and it's that time of year where folks are, are in the office, things are quiet, they're getting some thoughts lined up, penciling some things out for 2023, starting to maybe look at some of those decisions or maybe they're already booking some inputs, you know, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So we got to talk new crop. What are your thoughts here, new crop wise? As we near the end of the year, it starts to look ahead. Are you selling right now? Are you kind of watching? Are you putting some wish orders out there? What are your thoughts right now, Dwayne? Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up. I mean, we've had a few producers call in lately, and I think they they hear that I've been bullish lately, and they read my commentary, and they fully expect me to stop them when they want to sell new crop beans. But I told one guy yesterday, I said, I, I might be bullish, but I'm not foolish, I said. And really corny dad joke, but I told him that anyway, I said, you know, and the reason what I mean behind that is when I look at a spreadsheet, you're making good money on new crop beans. So I can't sit here, even though I'm a bull and say, no, you can't sell that. I mean, it's, it's good. It's profitable gets, if you haven't done any sales so far, get some on the books. Uh, I just mentioned earlier in the interview that we're running out of time for a weather scare in Brazil. So maybe we don't get that big weather scare. Then, then you got to count on a weather scare in uh, the spring for us and the, you know just more risk added on so you know that's the one crop i like selling first is the uh, new crop beans uh, the corn and wheat i'm holding off of i feel like maybe i missed the boat on wheat a little bit so and obviously i just mentioned that we got to buy some acres there or rally up otherwise we're gonna have sh- uh, short crops so a little friendly yet the corn and wheat but definitely selling the soybeans 
Well, and thinking too, obviously, if we're booking inputs, you know, it'd be smart to sell a little bit. And I know I've I've heard the argument thrown out. Some guys who say, well, I don't know what crop insurance it levels are going to be here and there, this and that. But I, I mean, even if it's 5%, 10%, something to protect some of that risk, I think, is important, yeah. Wayne. Yeah, don't worry about your crop insurance levels. And that's coming from a crop insurance agent. Uh, you still got to sell your crop, okay? And we're going to sell that at the best level we can. And if you sell some new crop beans here and that's your worst sale, you, you can be mad at me all you want next fall because I'm going to be pretty happy on my farm either way. I, I think 23 is going to be a year where, you know, you make, if you do make some sales now, there, there's a chance in the spring you're a little upset with these sales. But by fall, I'm just, my guess is that you're pretty happy with them. I mean, it, it, we all know we can't have high prices forever. Eventually, we're going to have a good crop and going to have a good year and it. I'm just going to say we're probably due for that this year. But remember, that's coming from the bull that thinks we're going to have a scare in the meantime there, maybe in spring about acres, you know, to spike us back up. Maybe we can get our $7 corn. And then I'll be selling my old crop a new crop with two hands because it, it's just good prices and good risk management. And by t the end of 23, I think you'll be very happy. Real quick, holiday trade can tend to get volatile with low volume. I mean, or yeah. if you're if you're sitting there old crop or even maybe new crop or you may be throwing some wish orders out there some targets maybe on, on some crop here just to see if you if something happens and we rally back to seven dollar quarter rally through fifteen dollar beans Dwayne it's a really good thing to do during a blizzard is to sit in your office where it's quiet and kind of get some marketing plans and and some price goals in place and like you said with next week's trade don't think, well, I'll just watch the market and see, because it might be there in a heartbeat and gone, and your broker can't call you that fast. And So yeah, just go ahead and put some wish orders out there. At least your next couple of sales, I mean, you should just put them all out there and leave them, but I know none of us are good at that. But yeah, <laughs> put those out there. You get a little drought scare in the morning in Brazil, uh, say Tuesday morning, market spikes up 35 cents, and then by the afternoon, well, we've corrected it, and I guess that forecast is wrong, and we're, we've lost it all. So, yeah, you got to have the orders in place to get filled. Definitely. I don't want to shortchange livestock. Let's segue over there. Fairly yeah. choppy day on Wednesday, both cattle and hogs, which I, I think those markets, the protein sector, was waiting on the Fed announcement as well, it seemed like maybe. Just not yeah. a lot of fresh news uh, in either cattle or hog trade, it felt like, on Wednesday. No, a little disappointed in the cattle market, Jesse. Didn't see the follow-through buying. We had new contract highs in the back months, not in the upfront February. And we needed to see some buying continue after getting those new highs yesterday. We didn't see it. And without getting that today, it was pretty easy to sell off into the close. And box beef prices, man, every report all over the board. Uh, today was our turn to sky or not skyrocket, but plummet down $6 at midday. So that probably had some pressure on the market too. But yeah, lack of buying just opened the doors for the bears here in the cattle market. Definitely. Well, and that cash trade too, it's just been kind of slow, sluggish here. And I think last week was yeah. the first week in a while that we didn't go up. Um, I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's interesting to watch this trade as we get to the holiday season and whether, you know, and those Packer margins, I mean, they're, they're going negative for the Packers right now. So are they going to start you know, look at it slowing down, chain speeds, et cetera. The, the, a lot of things to watch, I think, right now. A lot of dynamics at play. You're exactly right. I mean, those Packers have gotten to be their size and made the money they have because they're good at business. You know, they're good at a time where maybe the supply is tight of cash cattle, but they're good at, like you said, slowing chain speeds, acting like they don't want it and, you know, giving a cash bid real quick and then pulling it. You know, it's, yeah, a little lackluster here. And, you know, obviously the 160 cash is a psychological thing. It's maybe a little tough to poke through that, but volume has been light. Um, they're mm -hmm. going to have to kill something pretty soon. So I, you never know. There's something too with a light volume holiday trade next week. You could go screaming through 160. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. I know December hogs uh, off the board Wednesday, but that February yeah. contract pretty close to the index. So I, it doesn't seem like there's much of a, a story to watch there. Probably just a little bit of positioning as we go through the rest of the week, yeah. Dwayne. Yeah, the, the bulls are going to say that February discount or premium to cash is too narrow. It should be it should be higher than this. But the bear and I, this is probably the one market I'm a bear and says, well, what's your bullish story? Our exports aren't good. You know, China with more COVID numbers. Yes, they're opening up, but they're not going to need our pork anytime soon, I don't think. So, yeah, kind of a tough market there. I, I'm leaning towards the bearish side of things. I think the fu uh, futures market is going to come down to meet cash. 
Definitely. Dwayne, great stuff as always. And if uh, producers want to reach out to you, get a little advice, want to talk about the marketing plan there and Bolt Marketing, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, they can just call us here direct, 605-448-2365. And they can check us out online at boltmarketingllc.com. Dwayne, always appreciate the time and the insight. Thank you, sir. And uh, hopefully you stay fairly dry in the snowstorm up there. And we'll talk to you again soon. Hey, sounds good. Thanks, Jesse. And that's going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.